few days ago, President Trump delivered a speech that some believe solidified his position as the leader of the Republican Party. Even so, it seems it is still a party that's going through transformation. And at the state level, new party chair Jeannie Forrester is at the helm of things, and she is my first guest this morning. Good to see you, ma'am. Thanks morning, for joining Josh. us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's start there and the speech uh, by Donald Trump. I talked to you shortly afterwards. You said you were thrilled by it. You thought it was fabulous. I can't help but ask, do you think so many people are excited about the speech because the bar was set lower? <laughs> I mean, is that r realistic? Um, hmm, I don't know that I would say that. I think that uh, it was a unifying message for Republicans, actually, and it reached across the aisle and asked everyone to work together for the, be you know, the benefit of all Americans. So uh, I was excited to hear the speech, listen to them all the way through, and there has been a lot of positive feedback from that speech. Is, is there anything that you were looking for in particular when it comes to the issues? I mean, I, obviously, he touched on the opioid crisis, the crisis of addiction. Infrastructure is obviously an issue that's important to a lot of people here in New Hampshire. Sure, infrastructure. Uh, of course, you probably know veterans' issues are important to me, and I was happy to hear that that was one of his top priorities, uh, tax reform uh, and repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act. So I think he hit on a lot of important points for a lot of Americans and really reached out to the American public uh, about you know, us moving forward, working together, um, Republicans and Democrats, because it's all about the American people. Let me ask you about his impact so far on the Republican platform, because it would seem that in some areas he doesn't quite fit the mold, whether we're talking about expanding benefits and Social Security yeah. and, and other areas like that. How is he transforming what the Republican Party is and what it will become? Well, you know what? I'm not sure that he's so much transforming as that he is... Um, He's really tapping into what I think we've always been and just have not been able to articulate. When I think about the six years that I was in the Senate, knowing all the good work that we've done in the Senate and, and not being very uh, good about messaging, when I think about the things that we've led on, um, whether it is developmentally disabled or um, health care for all, or whatever it might be. Uh, we haven't been good about that. I think we've always been uh, very supportive of these issues. We haven't articulated that, and that I think that's what he brings right now, is that articulation about Republicans do care about the average worker, hardworking people. We want to make sure that everyone, uh, everyone's voice is listened to and that we are representing the American public. Let me ask you about his approach, because, I mean, obviously it's different, and there's it been is. some some, dra some distractions along the way. Mike Flynn, Jeff Sessions now, we'll see what comes of that, uh, said to have had some contact with Russian officials uh, prior to the inauguration. Is, is that... Uh, uh, is it a distraction that is hindering progress, do you believe, or do you think in a kind of a backwards way is keeping the focus off of some of the things that he's doing that might cause more controversy without those distractions? Well, I think, uh, you know, President Trump is a different animal. Uh, he, he is clearly different than what we've seen in the past in terms of the polished politician. I think that's what resonated with uh, folks here in New Hampshire and across the country is that he wasn't that type of uh, politician that he really spoke to kind of the gut feelings that people had, the frustrations, and, and uh, he is um, uh, keeping his word on his promises, and I think people are very excited about that. Here in New Hampshire, how would you characterize the state, or the health, for lack of a better term, of the Republican Party? Obviously, you had your Trump supporters, you had some people that weren't so much behind him. I mean, you've been in the, in the position now for a couple of weeks. Is there still some uh, bridging of the gap that needs to be done? Oh, sure. There's always, uh, always I think, uh, uh, work that needs to be done. We need, there are a lot of different factions in the Republican Party. We need to have everybody's voices be heard. Uh, those folks need to understand that we're going to listen. We're going to find that common ground and work together. Um, the health of the Republican Party in New Hampshire is great. We've got a governor in the corner office who's a Republican. We're leading in the Senate. We're leading in the House. We're leading in the Executive Council. It's unfortunate that we've um, uh, <coughs> lost uh, some seats on a federal level, but uh, the Republican base is energized. They're motivated. In 2018, we're going to take back those seats. I'm confident of that. You just pointed out the, the Republican majority in Concord, and yet one of the platform uh, items, right to work, was sure. unable to get through there. How big of a defeat was this politically, do you think, for this governor who was out there publicly saying, did I really want to get this done? Well, right to work is an important issue in New Hampshire. It was one of his issues that he campaigned on, the governor. Uh, it it was a loss for us, but I, I don't think it is so much of a, a stumbling block that he's not going to be able to work on 
all the rest of his agenda and bring Republicans together. Um, and I'm confident he'll do that. Yeah, I mean, clearly a lot of people were like, well, why, do, why maybe in his ear saying, well, why get so far out in front of this thing? Because it is still a long shot, even with the GOP majority. Well, I, I think that he, he got out in front of it. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, try to guess what's in the governor's head, but in my opinion, um, got out in front of it because it has been, it is a piece of what we want to do to drive and, and improve the economy here in New Hampshire. It is just one piece. And as you probably know, he's been out there talking to chambers. Uh, he is talking to businesses like he said he would in his campaign. He's going to hit his goal of 100 businesses, probably overachieve that, 100 businesses in 100 days. Uh, right to work was just one piece of that, and we didn't prevail on that. But all the other indicators that we're working on, all the other pieces that he's working on, he's moving full steam ahead. And I'm confident um, that while we didn't get there this, this time around, we will. So what are the priorities uh, for the rest of this session? Obviously, the budget is a big deal, but uh, as you kind of look down, uh, itemize some of the things that are important to the platform and to this governor, what are they? So uh, uh, the budget is a big piece, um, and uh, I'm confident in uh, my meetings with uh, House and Senate leadership and the governor's office that we're going to be working together to deliver a budget that everyone is going to be able to vote on and support and move that forward. Um, concealed carry, of course, that passed. Um, uh, which we expected. Um, you know, there are there are other issues. The opioid crisis, mm -hmm. governor's leading on that issue, which I, I applaud him for that. Which it may is, be the biggest issue. I it mean, is. probably is the biggest issue, yeah. at least according to the voters. Yeah. Um, Health care is a big issue. Uh, and all those items that he's outlined in his kind of agenda, his agenda, uh, we are moving forward. And I believe uh, at the end of his first um, uh, term, we're going to have some real successes. For your job, and you bring up health care and the ACA. I mean, talk about the great unknown. We don't know what this is going to look like uh, when uh, Republicans have their replacement plan. Uh, how fluid and flexible do you have to be? I mean, you talk about 2018 and winning seats back and mm -hmm. keeping the majority in Concord. So, I mean, how... how yeah, I mean, that's is that something where you really have to give a wide berth uh, to different ideas, different viewpoints within the GOP? Sure, and I, th I think, uh, you know, past history with uh, the Republican Party here in New Hampshire, I think, would show that we do keep an open mind. We uh, listen to all voices. We were able to come together and, and do some really good things. Uh, as we move into 2018, we're going to be looking at the federal level about how they're going to handle it. But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, whether you're Republican or a Democrat, um, health care, accessible, affordable health care is critical, um, not only to the people in New Hampshire, but across the nation. And I believe this president and this governor and the 32 other governors, Republican governors across the country, are going to work hard to make sure that we have a system in place that works. Yeah. And right now, it does not work. And right now, I mean, we're running out of time, but the governor has pointed to uh, the inclusion that this administration has shown when it comes to the states to yeah. talk about solutions as being a yeah. big positive. Uh, big part of your job, fundraising, 2018, winning elections takes money. How, how, are, the, how are the finances for the state well, GOP right we're now? In an off cycle, uh, but the enthusiasm and the support that I've uh, uh, gotten so far, I think I'm less than 30 days into the job, uh, has been overwhelming. So many people stepping up, so many people wanting to help, and we're reaching out to whether it's the the, the Trump supporters or uh, any, any of the folks who might have uh, not been engaged in the party in the past are now getting engaged, and we're going to make sure that we uh, take advantage of that and um, uh, really promote um, inclusion of all parts of the party so that in 2018 we're going to be we're going to take back even more seats in the Senate in the House we're going to keep our uh, Republican governor in the corner office and uh, we will take back those seats on a federal level well energy and enthusiasm no matter which side of the aisle you fall on is always a good thing yeah. state party chair uh, Jeannie Forrest great to see you thanks for joining us thank this you morning. Josh